everyone and welcome to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to start a spigot server in Minecraft 1.11. Now, this server does use your own computer's resources, meaning if you have less than, honestly, 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're probably not going to be able to run this server super effectively, especially with a lot of plugins. Also, this is hosted on your own internet, meaning you can only give the IP address out to your friends and family and people you really, really trust. Because if you give it out to anyone and everyone, even people you don't necessarily trust, you let your friends give it out to people who you don't know, they can do very, very bad things with it, including completely taking your internet offline, slowing it down a ton. They can also find out possibly where you live all from this IP address that this server will have. Now, if you don't want to have any of that worry, if you have a bad computer or you want to be able to give the IP address out to everyone, luckily I do have a solution for you. The breakdown.xyz slash apex. First link down below will take you to get an awesome 24-hour Minecraft server from Apex Minecraft Hosting. It's an incredible company. We've worked with them for years, sold thousands of servers. They really take care of their customers with great support, all of that stuff. Go check it out again, thebreakdown.xyz slash apex. First link down below. Stop the hassle. One-click spigot server installation there as well, by the way. This is a pretty strenuous process, what we're about to do. It's not extremely difficult. But it takes time, and it can be difficult for someone who doesn't know a lot about their router, basically. But if you just want one-click spigot installation, they have it for you. So that, again, is the breakdown. .xyz apex. First link down below. But let's say you're okay with hosting it on your own computer, hosting your server on your own computer, all of that stuff. How do you do that? Well, first off, we need to go to the second link down below, and it will take us here. Where we then want to click on Download Spigot 1.11. It'll take us off to AdFly where we've got to wait a minute. And after that, we can click skip up here after five seconds. Two, one, boring stuff, skip. And now it'll download Spigot in the bottom. So it's going to open up all this crap which we can just close out of. And we want to keep Spigot. We can now minimize the browser. And here Spigot is on our desktop. We want to create a new folder and title it Spigot. Just like that, you can title it whatever you want, truthfully. I just like to name mine Spigot or Spigot Server. It, it literally doesn't matter what you call that folder, but you want to take Spigot that you downloaded, the jar file, and drag it into it. Now we want to open up this folder we've created, and there is the Spigot file we downloaded. We want to right-click and create a new text document, and then we just want to click off of it. So it's just titled New Text Document. We want to open it up, and then there's a code in the description down below. It's going to look like this. It's going to look really out of place. It's going to be java-xmx1024, this right here, right? Java-whatever. Click that, highlight it, copy it, and paste it into the new text document you created. What you want to do after that is click File, Save As, and then it'll open up, make sure you're in the Spigot server file or whatever the name of the folder you created is, and you want to save this as run.bat. Run.bat then you want to click save type or save as type all files. So file name run dot bat all lowercase exactly like that. It's important. Then you want to save type as all files. Once you've got that, click save and then you want to close out of all of the documents and everything. And you should have this run file right here, right? The Windows batch file that says run. Click on that and then it'll run some things, do some stuff. And boom, there you go. It's loading things in, and then it'll stop. And it should say press any key to continue. So press any key. Now you want to agree to the EULA. So double click on the EULA here. EULA equals false. We're going to change that to EULA equals TRUE, assuming that you're not going to break anything found at the EULA here. This server isn't, so EULA equals true is fine. Go ahead and click file, save, close out of that, and then we can double click on run again. Opens up command prompt and this time it'll go through and actually generate the world boom as you can see all of these files appear files are generating and worlds are being created and spawn areas are being prepared all of that crazy stuff eventually over here it's going to say done and right there it is done is there now we can go ahead and type stop hit enter and it will stop the server and we can close out a command prompt now we want to go up to the Windows button up here, or it's probably in your bottom left. But you want to click on that, open up the Start menu, and then just type CMD, just like that. You want to find Command Prompt, right-click on it, and run it as an administrator. And then in Command Prompt, you want to type IP Config, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. 
Hit enter and it'll give you information like your IPv4 address, subnet match, default. It doesn't all matter. All we need is your IPv4 address and your default gateway. We need both of those numbers. And what we want to do is come over here to where it says server properties, right? This properties file that says server. It might You might be able to double click on it and it open with notepad. If it doesn't, you can right click on it and then open it with and then double click on notepad. Opens this. And right here is what we're looking for. Server dash IP. Next to server dash IP, put whatever your IPv4 address is over here next to that. For me, it's 192.168.0.120. For you, it's probably something completely different, and that is perfectly fine. Whatever your IPv4 address is, copy it over, even if it's completely different from mine. Go ahead and click File, Save, close out of this, and close out of your server for now. Now, we need to go to our browser, our internet browser, and we need to open a new tab. In this new tab, in the address bar where you would type something like the breakdown.xyz, for example, right there you would type in your default gateway. For me, that's 192.168.0.1. For you, it's probably something completely different, and that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and hit enter. It'll then open up your router. Now, I'm logged into my router, so let me log out for a second. That way you guys can see what that'll look like. So normally, whenever you go to your default gateway in your browser, you'll see a login box. It'll probably look something completely different than what you see right here. It might look exactly the same. It really just depends. I was already logged in, so I didn't see this. I had to log out, and then I'm good to go. Now, you most likely don't know your router username and password. If you do, awesome. Go ahead, type it in, log into your router, and then skip a little bit forward and head in the tutorial. But if you don't know your router username and password, Password, simply go here to uh, routerpasswords.com or the third link third link down below it'll take you here where you need to find the manufacturer of your router now your router is a physical device in your house so you'll want to find that and then uh, look for whatever manufacturer makes it like Belkin or Neki or Apple or whoever makes your router and then from there go through here and find the uh, type of router you have, boom, find password, and then somewhere on the router it's going to have a model number of some sort. A lot of people have WNR Netgear routers. So as you can see, WNR, and then for username we have admin, and then for password we have password. So we come over here to the login box, type in admin, and then type in password and log in. Now if that doesn't work, if you find it on the router password's website and it doesn't work, no worries. Contact whoever set up the network in your house. This might be your mom, dad, sister, brother, significant other. Whoever it is, contact them and ask them what they made the username and password for the router. If they don't know, no worries. Contact your internet service provider, your ISP, and at the very least, they'll be able to assist you in resetting your router password to default. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, log into mine, and I'll meet you guys once I've logged in. So once you log into your router, you'll see something exactly or most likely completely different from what I see here, what you see here as well. And uh, that's because everyone pretty much has a different kind of router. There are tons of different router companies, so pretty much everyone has a different one. But no worries. What we're looking for here is port forwarding. Your, it might be labeled port forwarding slash port triggering. It might be labeled apps and gaming. For me, it's labeled virtual servers under the forwarding tab. So I have a forwarding tab over here, and then there's a virtual servers, right? You might have that same thing. It might be completely different for you. If you can't find it, you've looked in advanced, and you've looked in advanced, advanced, and you've looked in advanced everywhere, and you've looked for forwarding, you've looked in like your connectivity tab. You can't find port forwarding, you can't find apps and gaming anywhere, you can't find virtual servers anywhere, then go to the fourth link down below, and it will take you to this. Set up router where you again want to find the type of router you have. Let's say yet again that you have a Netgear. Netgear is probably one of the most popular types of routers out there, Netgear and Linksys. And then you want to scroll down to whatever type of router you have, like a Nighthawk for example. And here you'll be able to get the manuals for the router. Then you can go through those manuals. A lot of times they come in searchable PDFs. So you can just search through there for port forwarding. And then once you find it, it'll tell you how to do it on your router. Once you've found that, come back to your router and add the port forward. So you found port forwarding. Once you're there, go and add one for your service port or your external port or your internal port. If it says the word port right here, right? If it says port and then it's asking for like a number, that is going to be 25565 every single time for both your internal port and your external port for your service port and your internal port doesn't matter it's going to be two five five 
For your IP address, that's going to be your IPv4 address over here. So 192.168.0.120 is what it is for me. For you, it's probably something extremely different. Whatever it is for you, though, just copy it over into IP. For protocol, I'm going to leave that as all. For you, it might be both. It might be TCP slash UDP. Doesn't matter what it is, but what you're wanting to do is make sure that it gets TCP and UDP both. Not just one of them. You don't just want to do TCP, and you don't just want to do UDP. You want to do all. You want to do both. You want to do the TCP slash UDP. Whatever it is, you want to do both of them. Then go ahead and click save. And the hard part, guys, is over. Woo! Round of applause for everyone. You have now port forwarded, and your server is uh, pretty much ready to be played on. So let's go ahead and start up the server here, as well as start up Minecraft in 1.11. And there are two ways to connect to your server. The way that you can connect, the person hosting the server, and the way that your friends can connect, people outside of your house, in their own houses, on separate internet connections. Those people will connect a different way than you will. How you can connect is just go into multiplayer, we'll direct connect to you now, and use this address. This is my IPv4 address from over here. Typed it like seven times, but I'll type it again real quick. 192.168.0.120. Hit enter, and it will join on into the server. We'll see my name, right there it is, next game, pop up over here in uh, the server log and now we're in uh, the spigot server simple as that now how do you uh how do your friends join right well let's back out of minecraft go back to our internet browser which we became so frequently in right open up a new tab go to google.com right like that and then on google just type in two letters ip and hit enter and then there's your public IP address, or my public IP address. For you, it's going to be something different. And for you on my screen, it's just uh, the last two numbers. Because people can do some very, very, very bad things with this number. Your public IP address, people can do so many bad things with it. Like I said, take your internet offline, find out where you live, all of that stuff. So copy your public IP address like I just did. And come over here back into Minecraft and connect to it. For you, again, just the last two letters because uh, you don't want anyone to have this. Just like I don't want you to have my public IP. Go ahead and click join server and it will log us back in to the exact same server. Now, if you can't log into this, it's most likely an issue with either one of two things. Your port forward, right? Or your uh, firewall. There's a firewall most likely blocking connections to your internet and to your computer that way or your port forward is messed up so make sure you're port forwarding not port triggering and if you're positive that your port forward is correct go back through and uh, see if you can turn off any firewalls now be aware if you turn off any firewalls it's going to expose your computer and it is not safe to do that but hopefully you now have a minecraft 1.11 spigot server up and running i do want to mention that if you want a 24-hour server that's up all the time that's not hosted on your own computer that you don't have to port forward for you don't have to use your own internet connection all of that stuff Simply go to the breakdown.xyz slash apex, first link down below to get an awesome 24-hour Minecraft server that's up all the time, or as much as you want it to be up, I should say, and uh, doesn't have to worry about all that other stuff, like your port forwarding and all that. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We make awesome videos every single day of the week. This has been The Breakdown, and I am out, guys. Peace.